Hello everyone, this is Ninja Girl Sakura One here, back with another Legend of Korra episode review. Today's episode is, of course, Book Four, Episode Four, The Calling, and it basically revolves around Tenzin's three kids going to look for Korra, much to Pema's concern about them being off by themselves. But they do leave, and they eventually do stop at a town somewhere, and. Iki tries, or not Iki, Jinora, excuse me, tries to meditate to see if she can find Korra with her spiritual ability, but she gets very annoyed because her brother and sister won't be quiet and allow her to concentrate. So to leave Jinora to do her meditating thing, Milo and Iki go into the main town and we actually learn that Milo can draw because he actually drew a sketch of Korra, and it's actually very good. And they use this sketch to show people in hopes that somebody has seen her. So, yeah. Milo actually runs into a little girl while he's doing this, and begins to flirt with her, and it kind of reminded me of how Aang used to flirt with Katara a little bit. I thought that was funny. And then Iki interrupts, but... Before they actually leave the town to go back to Genora, they actually go across, go to the stand where Cora had gone to in Cora alone, and they see her picture on the wall. And the guy says, "Yeah, I saw the Avatar, but it was six months ago." So that doesn't help. But so far, that's their only lead. So better than absolutely nothing, I suppose. And then we go to Korra and Toph, still at the swamp, and Korra's asking Toph, well, what do you want to do today? And Toph basically just wants to sit around and do nothing, but Korra gets kind of annoyed because that's what they've been doing for the past two days, sitting there doing nothing. So Korra asks to hear stories about when she was training Aang, and she really wants to hear, apparently. and. Toph does tell her the stories about how when she was training Aang to Earthbend, Sokka got stuck in the hole and she had to really push Aang so he could finally learn to do it. But it was a very shortened story of what really happened. And Korra thought the story would be a lot more intense than that, I guess. But yeah, it was still a really nice little flashback to the original series, kind of. Those episodes were great, I still remember them. But, yeah. It was fun to hear Toph tell us those stories again. So, yeah. The kids, we go back to the kids now, and they're all just getting on each other's nerves. Milo threw out the food that Pema had made for them in the river, and... They're just, Jinora can't even meditate, and Iki is annoyed the most because she's feeling completely left out, and she runs off, and while she's trying to help this little animal, she actually gets attacked by two Earth Empire soldiers, and when they take her to where they live, I guess, they plan to capture her brother and sister and give them to Kuvira, I guess thinking that they'll be promoted. But yeah. We then go back to Korra in the swamp, and Toph had asked her to go get some mushrooms to eat. I guess that's what they've been eating since they've been there. But when she's out in the swamp, she actually begins to see visions of every villain she's actually ever faced. From Amon all the way up to Zaheer. Which, that's another good little refresher for the previous seasons. And then we go back to Iki again, and she tells the two guards that have captured her that she doesn't even want to go see her brother and sister again because she's just so annoyed that she's being left out, and her captors actually seem to like Iki and kind of get where she's coming from because they couldn't go out with the rest of the soldiers with and everything, they had to stand guard where they were. 
so they kind of understand the being left out. Then we go back to Toph and Korra, and Toph explains to Korra that she wanted her to see those visions, and that she needs to listen to the swamp, because the swamp actually wants her to get better too. Because remember, the swamp is alive, technically. And that Korra needs to face her fears before she can face any new villain. So yeah. Um, Milo and Jinora then realize that Iki had not returned, and they go looking for her and do find her. And they knock out the two um, Earth Empire soldiers, just as they were about to let her go, actually, but they knock them out and take Iki and go. And Iki apologizes for her brother and sister knocking them out and actually leaves them um, some food, because actually those two Earth Empire soldiers had found the food Milo threw away. So, yeah. <laughs> They then continue on their way, and right when they get to the swamp, they'd actually figured out that's the one place that they hadn't checked. So yeah, not even the Earth Empire soldiers had checked there. So just as they get there, Janora tries to meditate again, and she can't sense Korra, so she tells Iki, yeah, I don't think Korra's here. But just as they're about to fly away on their flying bison, they are captured by vines, kind of like how um, Aang's group was captured, although they were brought there through a tornado, if I remember right. Yeah. So they get stuck in the swamp. Um, we then see Korra again, and Toph is taking her to the giant tree, if you guys remember from the episode The Swamp, which now we pretty much know already, but seeing that tree actually confirms that it's the exact same swamp from the episode The Swamp. So we figured that already though. But she takes her to the tree and explains to Korra that she's been disconnected from everyone who loves her for so long and that she really needs to reconnect with everyone and kind of reconnect with herself in a way. So she touches the tree and she can see everything and she actually sees Jinora, Iki, and Milo and she couldn't believe they had actually gotten there and were there. And because Korra did this, Jinora can actually sense her now and they rush over to her and they give her a big hug and She's just extremely happy to see familiar faces, and they explain to her what's been going on, how Kavira is taking over the Earth Kingdom, um, and that they need her to come home immediately. But Korra's like, I don't know if I can, I'm not the Avatar I used to be, but they convince her that she's got to come home and that she can do it, basically. And also, um, Toph likes Milo. <laughs> she liked his attitude. Yeah. But, they then go to the cave where Korra and Toph are staying, and Korra realizes, okay, I'm ready, and she breathes, and she bends the middle out of herself, and lets go of her fear. And that allows her to go back into her avatar state again, which means... The Avatar is back. She's ready. She can do it. And that makes me happy. I want to see Korra kick some butt again. She just had to not be so scared anymore. So it seems like she's finally back to her old self. She's going to be alright. And she can handle this now. And can reconnect with Rava and go into the Avatar state, which kicks butt. So, whew, thank goodness. All that's... The metal's gone. She's finally herself. They then get on a Iki, Milo, and Janora's Sky Bison and say goodbye. And Korra thanks Toph for everything. And it's just very grateful. So, 
top then says, finally, some peace and quiet again, and goes back into her cave, and that's where the episode ends. So, overall, great episode, and Korra is finally back, and that makes me very, very happy. I want to see how she handles Kabira very badly. So, next episode, hopefully, is when they get back to Republic, and she confronts her and kicks her butt, <laughs> hopefully. Although I think the creator said that it's not going to be her bending that wins this fight. It's going to be something else. Probably just Korra saying what she needs to say and making her point. Maybe. We'll see. But just great episode overall. And I can't believe we don't have that many episodes left because there's only 13. So that leaves about 9 episodes left now. Aww. It's coming to an end, and it's too soon. I don't want it quite yet, but I'm sure the final battle is going to be epic. But yeah, great episode. Definitely watch it if you haven't yet. If you haven't, then I pretty much spoil things for you, so my apologies. But until next Friday, everyone, I will see you all later.